you and good evening. On behalf of T.L. Blakemore, Lodge 6 Executive Board, President Bill Davis, Second Vice President Larry Childress, Treasury Secretary Judy King, Sergeant at Arms Bill Lazat, Chaplain Don Rosardi, and the Madison County Law Enforcement Community, it is my honor and privilege to welcome each of you to our 2016 memorial service. I am Donnie Shaw, and I am the Vice President of FOP Lodge 6. Now I ask everyone to please rise for the honor guard to post and present the colors. Right now, in this country, an armed man is breaking into someone's home to cause harm, to steal and destroy. Right now, there's a search going on for someone that has done an unspeakable harm to a young child that has armed himself, vowing not to be taken alive. Right now, there is a young mother that is responding to a fight call with multiple offenders with shots fired in a public park. Right now, there is a young father struggling with a known drug dealer who has abused and assaulted their companion or a family member. Right now, there's a search warrant being executed in a fortified drug dealer's residence with heavily armed assailants inside. And even right now, there's another family mourning the loss of another hero to the sinful world in which we live. It just doesn't seem fair that such a few would sacrifice so such greatness to protect our homes, our businesses, our property, 
and to safeguard the freedoms that so many have fought over for the decades. It doesn't seem fair to see crowds march in behalf of robbers and rapists and thieves and addicts. It just didn't seem fair. But there is a group. There is a group that believes in the code of law, the constitution upon which this nation was founded, and the biblical principles of right and wrong. Yes, there is a group that does not protest when the convicts are set free. There is a group. There is a group that doesn't lower ourselves to respond to the harsh threats and the public ridicule that we must endure from those that, by the way, are quick to summon our numbers when they are threatened by those wishing to do harm against them. There is a group. And those groups are called by God. They're called police officers. They're called deputy sheriffs. They're called U.S. Marshals. They're called troopers and state police. Investigators and federal investigators. They're the ones that others can only dream about that have never stood in the line of threatening danger. We are the law to protect the weak and to comfort the injured, to seek out the evil that wish to attack and destroy. We provide protection from wolves, from those who do not respect the cause in which we offer our lives. Those, we have never stepped, those that have never stepped into danger will never understand our calling. But these men, these men engraved on the wall, these men and their families on this wall have paid the ultimate sacrifice. But do not grieve, families, because these men were called. Yes, we were called just as God called the children of Israel, and He has just called us. For we come from all corners of the earth, as it's written in Isaiah. I brought to you from the ends of the earth and called you from its farthest corners. And I said to you, you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and I have not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. And I will help you and do not be afraid, for I am your God. And I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will hold on to you. I will hold on to you with my right hand. Be sure that those who enrage against you will be ashamed and disgraced. And those who contend with you will become as nothing and will perish. You will look for those who contend with you, but you will not find them. For those who war with you will become absolutely nothing. For I, the Lord, your God, hold your right hand, and I say to you, do not fear, for I will help you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, great Lord, the Alpha and Omega, God, we'd ask that you would be with these families, God, that are here to represent their loved ones that are etched on this wall. God, that we would never forget them and the sacrifices that they made and the heroes that they were. Lord, I ask blessings upon those that are serving right now, that are serving in danger's way at this very moment in this country. God, I'd ask that you would protect them. God, that you would safely take them back home to their families. God, I'd ask that you would bless each person that is here today. God, that we would find understanding in what the world is. God, we'd ask that you would continue to bless our lives. And Lord, everything that we will do will give you honor and glory. In precious Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
John F. Kennedy signed a bill into law on October 1, 1962. The proclamation signed by President John F. Kennedy read as follows. To pay tribute to the law enforcement officers who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our country and to voice our appreciation for all those who currently serve on the front lines of the battle against crime, the Congress, by joint resolution approved October 1, 1962, has authorized and requested the President to designate May 15th of each year as Peace Officers Memorial Day. In the week in which it falls as National Police Week, and by public law has requested that the flag be flown at half staff on Peace Officers Memorial Day. On October 15, 1991, the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial was officially dedicated. At the time of dedication, there was over 12,000 fallen officers names that were engraved on the memorial walls. Currently, there are over 20,400 names on the memorial. And each year during National Police Week on May 13th, the Memorial Fund hosts a candlelight vigil attended, more, attended by more than 20,000 officers and survivors to formally dedicate the names added to the memorial walls that year. At the current rate at which names are being added, the memorial walls are expected to be filled by 2050. Now, please direct your attention to our memorial wall. This wall before you was erected in 1990 by the T.L. Blakemore Fraternal Order of Police Lodge No. 6 to memorialize law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty in Madison County, Alabama. Since 1880, 22 men have died in the line of duty and their names are engraved upon that wall. Each year since 1991, we honor these men during the week leading up to Peace Officers Memorial Day. And now please give notice to the Honor Guard personnel standing in honor before the wall. They're from multiple agencies. They're all in their best dress uniforms. They've all give extra care and detail to those uniforms today. And they're not asking for anything in return. What they ask for is to be able to be here to honor and stand before you all and honor those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Momentarily, surviving family members, friends, or agency representatives will make a difficult walk to pin a single flower of remembrance and love. Many of you here today have made a sacrifice to be in attendance. I believe we all can agree that is a small compared to the ultimate sacrifice given by those that we honor. These 22 men who on that day that to them started just as normal as any other day, but did not end normal. The day they served their end of watch could not have been predicted, but had it been, all of them would have chose to run, to run to what most of us would run from, to fulfill their commitment to what they had sworn to do. And with their sacrifice, there are now the survivors that continue to maintain their own responsibilities. Whether those survivors are family members, co-workers, or friends, they continue because there's still the responsibilities and the duties to uphold. Fortunately, there's no names to add to the Memorial Wall of Madison County this year. However, across the state of Alabama, there were four line of duty deaths. Officer David Colley of Montgomery Police, Lieutenant Richard Woods of Pell City Police, Officer Roger Odell, Town Creek Police, and Sergeant Charles Mitchum of Loxley Police. Two of those were automobile accidents, the other two were heart attacks. Across the nation, there were 128 line of duty deaths, and we honor them also today. I now invite Lodge President Bill Davis to the podium to share his reflections. Welcome. First of all, I wanna let you know that I appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here with us. Each year we come to this monument to honor those brave officers who have paid the supreme sacrifice. They gave their life in the line of duty. In the calendar year of 2015, we had 128 officers killed in the United States. Of that, four were from Alabama. The average age of the officer, 41. Average number of years of service, 12 years, two months. So far this year, we've had 35 officers killed in the line of duty in the United States. Average age, 37. Average number of years service, 11. 
March alone, we had 16 officers killed in the U.S. Far, far too many. It should be none. This is a dangerous world that we live in. The police officer knows that and faces it every day. Never knowing if they'll get to go home at the end of the shift. They are the thin blue line between us and those that would choose to do us harm. I ask you today, say a special prayer for anyone who wears a badge, and don't forget those who serve us in the military, and especially don't forget these names on this monument. Thank you. Thank you, President Davis. Now I invite Madison County Assistant District Attorney Tim Gannon. First, I want to tell you what an honor it is for me to be here with this group of people. This is, this is special to me, and I'm honored to be here to represent the DA's office and the District Attorney, Rob Roussard. While I was thinking about what I might say, it has occurred to me that there is a trend across the nation. There's, a, there's an agenda that would undermine the trust that our citizens have in law enforcement. It's pretty obvious to me that that's what's going on. And I'll tell you right now that it's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because of these men and women here who wear that uniform. Because they wear it with honor, they wear it with pride, and they understand what sacrifice for your fellow man is. The ones who would undermine that trust have no idea what it is to have honor, what it is to risk their life for their fellow man and for the people that they don't even know. They have no idea what the people over there under those tents have gone through. They don't understand sacrifice. I want to express my gratitude to the families for the sacrifice that you have made, for the sacrifice of the men that are on this wall. Gratitude is the word that kept coming to my mind, how thankful I am for those men on that wall and how thankful I am for all the men and women here who are wearing uniforms. I am humbled to be here. I am humbled to be in your presence. The truth is that you don't live in a world of political correctness. You live in a world of right now, right and wrong. The truth is, it's dangerous to respond to a domestic dispute. It's dangerous to serve a warrant on a drug house. It's dangerous to serve civil commitment papers. It's dangerous to respond to an accident with injuries. It's dangerous to check suspicious subjects who may be armed. It's dangerous to do what the men on that wall did. And it's dangerous to do what y'all are going to do when you leave here and go back to work. And we understand that, and we acknowledge that, and we're thankful for that. There's a name on that wall that dates back to 1880. It's about 130 years ago. And every year since 1991, we've been here. And every year from now, we are going to be here. To the families under that tent that have loved ones on that wall, we will not forget. We will be here next year, and the year after, and the year after that. And the ones of you that are in uniform right now, hope, 
hopefully not, but if there is another name added to that wall, I can commit to you this. We will mourn you and we will avenge you. We will seek justice on your behalf and on behalf of your family because you have earned that. And then after we seek justice, we will come back here and remember the sacrifice that you made. And we'll be back here the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. Because we will not forget honor and duty and sacrifice. We will not forget. And I can promise you that. It's been wisely stated that nothing worth having comes cheap or easy price of domestic peace and keeping all of us safe from those who prey on the innocent is sometimes countered in the most valuable currency we know, and that is that of human life. These men were all exemplary role models of courage, honor, selfless service. They reported to work not knowing that that very day was their end of shift. There's just nothing routine about law enforcement. Today, as we should every day, we honor all those who were, all those they did. They stood for years. We were privileged to have their service, their protection, their friendship, and especially their love. In his speech the night of the Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy, President Ronald Reagan said something of the Challenger astronauts who perished. And I can say the same thing, and I think you agree with me about the men on this who this wall. That is, they were aware of their dangers, they overcame them, they did their jobs brilliantly, and their dedication was complete. For all of these 22 law enforcement officers who lost their lives protecting the public, this memorial service stands as a tribute to the courage, their sacrifice. They made a choice. They made their life count for something. Their service matters not only because it saved lives and families and neighborhoods, it matters because it's the right thing to do. It's the definition of honor. This memorial is also a tribute to the living, the partners, the teammates of the fallen, to their families, and all of those, those of us who are foot soldiers in the battle against lawlessness. This year, as mentioned, 35 officers have already fallen in this country. These officers, just like the 22 on this memorial, all left behind family, friends, colleagues, struggling to piece together what happened and why. All died as they lived, committed to duty, honor, and they chose a life dedicated to service. This service requires discipline, hard work, long hours, and yeah, it takes a toll on the families too. And sadly, it cost them their lives. I know everyone here joins me in praying that we will add no more names to this memorial, but as mentioned by Sheriff Dorning, the very nature of what we do by putting others first, by running into danger as other people flee, it kind of ensures that uh, we will continue to add names to these memorials in the future. While these brave warriors have gone on before us, may God bless all these families and survivors. May God bless the law enforcement officers and agencies represented here today and the citizens we serve. For the price we pay is not promised to be cheap or easy, but is promised to be worth it one day. Thank you. The following law enforcement officers stationed in Madison County, Alabama, have paid the ultimate sacrifice in serving and protecting the citizens of Madison County. Deputy Marshal John B. Hardy, 
Lieutenant for Marshal Hardy, our current Deputy Marshals, Barbara Norris and Curtis Yates. Marshal Hardy was shot on Wednesday, December 8, 1880, while attempting to serve an arrest warrant. Huntsville Police Officer William J. Street. Penning for Officer Street is cousin Mark Harbarger. Officer Street was killed on Monday, October 8, 1883, while investigating a disturbance in a home. Madison County Sheriff Deputy Tim Anderson. Penning for Deputy Anderson is Sheriff's Representative Christy Manning. Deputy Anderson was killed on Thursday, July 7, 1887. Madison Police Department Constable William A. Russell, Jr. Penning for Constable Russell, Jr. is Madison Representative Jennifer Swartz. Constable Russell, Jr. was killed on Sunday, November 22, 1903, while attempting to serve civil papers. Huntsville Police Officer Frank McKissick. Penning for Officer McKissick is cousin Mark Harbarger. Officer McKissick was shot Friday, May 26, 1916, when he encountered burglary suspects. Madison County Sheriff Deputy J.C. Drake. Penning for Deputy Drake is Sheriff's Representative Mary Beth Jernigan. Deputy Drake was killed on Saturday in December of 1928 while serving an arrest warrant. Madison County Sheriff Deputy Hugh Kraft. Penning for Deputy Kraft is Sheriff's Representative Lacey Jones. Deputy Kraft was shot on Wednesday June 12, 1929, when he was ambushed as he left his home. Madison County Sheriff's Deputy William T. McMahon. Penning for Deputy McMahon is great-grandsons Colton and Hudson McMahon. Deputy McMahon was shot on Saturday, October 7, 1939, while serving an arrest warrant. Huntsville Police Officer Yule B. Starr. Penny for Officer Starr is great niece Tammy Howard Owen. Officer Starr was assigned to the motorcycle squad when he died of injury sustained in a traffic collision on Saturday, December 5, 1953. Huntsville Police Officer Allen S. Logel Jr. Penning for Officer Logel Jr. is granddaughter Roxanne Zabel. Officer Logel Jr. died of a heart attack while making an arrest on Monday, November 19, 1956. New Hope Police Officer Emmett C. Bright. Pending for Officer Bright is Christy Manning. Officer Bright was shot on Thursday, November 5th, 1957, while making an arrest. Huntsville Police Officer Charles E. Drake, Jr. 
Penny for Officer Drake, his family friend, need a bath. Officer Drake was assigned to the motorcycle squad when he died of injuries sustained in a traffic collision on Monday, July 23rd, 1962. Huntsville Police Officer Preston R. Butler. Penny for Officer Butler is his sister, Barbara Faulkner. Officer Butler was assigned to the motorcycle squad when he died of injuries sustained in a traffic collision on May 11, 1966. Huntsville Police Officer William T. Gaskin. Penny for Officer Gaskin is Huntsville Representative Stephanie Hudson. Officer Gaskin was shot on Tuesday, August 27, 1968, while making a traffic stop. Madison County Sheriff Department Investigator Kenneth J. McDonald. Penny for Investigator McDonald is Sheriff's Representative Denise Duffy. Investigator McDonald was shot on Monday, May 26, 1975, while responding to a shots fired call. Madison County Sheriff Deputy Tommy R. Lewis. Penny for Deputy Lewis is his son, Anthony Lewis. Deputy Lewis was shot on Tuesday, November 1, 1994, while serving mental commitment papers. Madison County Sheriff Deputy Billy J. Throder. Penny for Deputy Thrower is Sheriff's Representative Michelle Shaw. Deputy Thrower was shot on Tuesday, November 1st, 1994, while serving mental commitment papers with Deputy Thomas Lewis. Deputy Thrower died from his injury September 17th, 1995. Alabama State Trooper Willis V. Moore. Penny for Trooper Moore is his father, Willie Moore. Trooper Moore was killed in a traffic collision on Monday, February 26, 1996. Madison County Sheriff Deputy Haskell G. McLean. Pending for Deputy McLean is his daughter, Andrea McLean. Deputy McLean was killed in a traffic collision on Thursday, May 31st. 2001, when he was responding to a disturbance involving an armed man that he located and pursued. Huntsville Police Officer Daniel H. Golden. Penny for Officer Golden are his parents, Kenneth and Diane Golden, along with his brother, David. Officer Golden was killed on Monday, August 29, 2005, when he responded to a domestic disturbance at a restaurant. Huntsville Police Officer William Eric Freeman. Penning for Officer Freeman is his son, Cameron Freeman, and his daughter, Emily Freeman. Officer Freeman was killed on Saturday December 15, 2007, while arresting a drunken driver in a traffic collision.
the military serviceman and women flower. Pinning a yellow flower that represents those who currently serve or have served in our armed forces is United States Marines Representative First Sergeant Don Adams, escorted by First Sergeant Ronnie Dickey, who also serves as a Huntsville Police Sergeant. The law enforcement flower. Fraternal Order of Police Representatives Michelle and Landry Claire Shaw will now pin the law enforcement flower. The blue flower represents those officers that are currently serving, those retired from law enforcement, and those officers killed nationwide during 2015. With the pinning of the last flower, it is our most fervent prayer that God will watch over those who protect us today and in the future so that it will never again be necessary to add another name to this Victor! lasting memorial monument. Please bow with me. Heavenly Father, our creator, our provider, our protector through our daily life, it's natural that we would come to you, lift our eyes and hearts towards you in celebration of love, sacrifice, and service to others. Lord, thank you for this opportunity for us to gather to honor our 22 fallen heroes. It's right that we stand for and respect those who stood valiantly for us. Lord, we hope everything we've done here tonight has brought honor and glory to your name. Father, I'd ask you to watch after everyone who's here tonight. Thank you for each of them for making time to come help us honor our heroes. Be with them as they leave here. Protect them on their safe journeys home. Lord, you know that we love those names on that monument. Those men answered our call to service, and they did it out of love, the same love, Father, that you have for us. Bravely, courageously, and selflessly, they paid the ultimate price. Never let us forget their sacrifice for the families they've left behind. Let us respect their privacy, but yet foster their needs, take care of each and every one that we can. Lord, I'd ask you to wrap your loving arms around those families, comfort them, and whenever possible, 
Give them some peace from that everlasting pain, from a void that will never be filled. Lord, I'd ask you to protect and watch over each of our men and women in uniform, be it the military or in law enforcement. Temper each one with tolerance, give them strength, and take them back home to their families. We ask a special prayer for one of our brothers, Rush, Officer James Rushbrook, who left us too soon just recently. God, watch after his soul and look after his family. I'd ask a special prayer for the leaders of all the law enforcement agencies represented here now. Give those leaders insight and wisdom and courage to lead so that they'll make right decisions in the right way at the right time. And Lord, who knows better than you all the civil unrest we have at this point in our country that's aimed at the soldiers or the shoulders and the backs of our law enforcement officers. God, grant us peace. Silence those agitators who would provoke others against us and protect each one of our brothers and sisters so that they may get home to their families. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. He was your sacrifice for us. May we all learn from his example. May we live in love as he did and make each one of us be bolder witnesses for you. And in closing, Lord, I would ask that everyone who can hear my voice here tonight would follow your directives that you put in the book of Micah, where you told us how we were all to act. We were to do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, God. These are our prayers, and we ask them all in your holy and blessed name. Amen. Now I would ask everyone to focus your attention back to the memorial as the honor guard performs the last duty of their station, the missing man formation. Thank you again for coming and sharing this experience with us. I hope tonight you go away knowing who these people were and how they served their end of watch. It's like a storm that cuts a path. It breaks your will. It feels like that. Oh, you think you're lost, but you're not lost. On your own, you're not alone. I will stand by you and I will help you through when you've done all you can do and you can't cope. I will dry your eyes and I will fight your fight. And I will hold you tight And I won't let go Oh, it hurts my heart To see you cry I know it's dark This part of life 
Well, it finds us all when we're too small to stop the rain. Oh, but when it rains, I will stand by you and I will help you through when you've done all you can do and you can't cope. And I will dry your eyes and I will fight your fight and I will hold you tight and I won't let you fall. Don't be afraid to fall. I'm right here to catch you. I won't let you down. I won't let you down. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. Cause I will stand by you. And I will help you through. When you've done all you can do. And you can cope. And I will dry your eyes. And I will fight your fight. And I will hold you tight. And I won't let go. No, I won't let go.